I have no slides. I'm actually not doing anything down here. Um, hello. Can everybody hear? Um, I am not going to try to explain fundamental things about Golem. We have the absolute authority to all things Golem. I'm not going to try to convince you of any uh, rabbinical point, which we also have an, an absolute authority here. Um, so so as, as a student, as we just said, uh, I'm uh, only going to try to make one or two points that are peripheral to the point, but might be helpful for uh, discussion. Uh, the first point, it might be the only point, is the, um, the title of this panel. It's a modern golem. And when I say modern, I, I, uh, I want to take that concept seriously. Uh, what, what would be the difference between modern golem and golem in, in general? So I'm not going to try to explain the golem in general, only that the, um, the atmosphere in which uh, we would encounter golem stories in the past, uh, pre-modern golem, um, would assume a nature, an absolute and immutable nature that the only way to mute uh, to change um, uh, would be through a higher order, invoking invoking uh, letters of a powerful alphabet, invoking higher forces, and then changing nature. Um, now, that holds in many minds until today. It's still there. We're still searching for things about nature. Nature is still out there. It's still happening. <laughs> Stars far away. Things are still exploding and. It's not as if everything is a human construct. But what has changed is that there is a, um, a change in the default scenario for, for how we approach nature, how we approach the world where we act. And that's a very important aspect uh, ethically, um, philosophically, especially religiously. And that change of default is that today it's very difficult to find uh, an appreciation of nature as something that deserve, deserves an existence on its own. Meaning, today, to say that, uh, how about we just uh, procreate normally? That is beginning to sound more and more uh, avant-garde. <laughs> today, in Huxley's uh, Brave New World, you have, you have uh, nature reserves for people who procreate normally, uh, who are wild genetically, because you want to keep them wild. And that, Nature reserve is just as artificial as uh, the concrete buildings and, and the genetically engineered people that, that aren't allowed on that reservation because you want to keep it pure. Um, take the Hula wetlands as case in point. Um, so even nature itself is becoming an artificial reserve in the sense that it's not something that you uh, that, that you're trying to just protect because it's uh, it, because it deserves protecting, uh, but because there's a very uh, large measure of, of confusion about where we're going, what we're trying to achieve um, by by the constant development of, of what we can do with the knowledge that we that we gather. That's one point about the golem being modern, and that 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 modernity is um, that we're approaching extreme scenarios that actually in, in, some, in some ways surpass uh, what's going on in the, in the classic or at least the folk stories about the golem, not the, like the, the major stories about a, a huge uh, anthropomorph. Um, but there are no warning bells. There, it, there is no feeling that we're um, breaking something cosmic in doing that. And unlike in the classic go uh, golem stories, and that is actually more dangerous than, than if there were warning bells. I mean, I'd be more scared of going into a nuclear factory that doesn't have like those yellow uh, um, flashlights going off and alarms. Uh, if, if there's nothing there, if there's no danger signs, then th that, that means that something is, uh, something is amiss in the way we, we appreciate what, in that case, energy is. And in this case, uh, how we make chimeras. The second point, and I'll be very brief about this point, is that we live in an information age, and we're going to hear in a second about that. Um, and in this information age, something has happened that actually does a return to the classic golem. Uh, and this is the opposite of what I just said. A return to the classic golem in the sense that the classic golem uses um, 
invokes um, letters of the alphabet, um, uh, languages as a creator, a magical creator of the world. And that's just one aspect of the golem. Um, and then afterwards, when you go into modernity and you go into uh, modern science, then you're not trying to create the world by speaking to it or by speaking it. Um, you describe it, you give models, you give equations. Um, but what we're, what we're encountering in, in current trends in science, in many, many, many aspects of science, is um, an appreciation of, of information as a uh, fundamental object that sits at the bottom of things, or um, the circum circumference of things, depends who you ask. Um, and, and there, information is no longer just a descriptive element, but a prescriptive element. Um, just like in a computer code, it's just a, not just a document or a message, it, it's, it's a crystallized algorithm, it's a, it's a process. Which is, and this is a deeper philosophical point, but it closes the circle that I, that I opened earlier with, with modernity being different than the classical golem. This actually brings us back around to the classical golem. Uh, it's no longer uh, like combinations of two letters from the 22 letter alphabet, it's uh, four nucleotides, but it's still manipulation of, of information in a modern version. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yisrael. That was a very unique uh, perspective, I might add, on uh, aspects of uh, ancient or old and uh, modern golem. Thank you very much.